After Joseph and his brothers died, the population of Israelites living in Egypt exploded. It grew so large that the new Pharaoh was fearful that they would form an army against Egypt. So he made the Israelites slaves, forcing them to make bricks all day long. Then Pharaoh took it a step further. He issued a ruling that all newborn Hebrew boys should be killed. Soon after that, an Israelite woman gave birth to a son. Fearful he would be killed, she put him in a basket and placed him in the Nile River. The basket floated downstream and was found by Pharaoh's daughter. She raised the boy in Pharaoh's palace as if he were her own child. She named him Moses. Years later, Moses saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite slave. Moses became angry and murdered the Egyptian. Fearing for his own life, Moses fled into the wilderness where he became a shepherd. One day while he was tending his flock, he saw something incredible. A bush that was engulfed in flames but was not burning up. Then Moses heard God's voice coming from the bush. God had seen the suffering of the Israelites and wanted Moses to lead the people out of Egypt. So Moses went back to Egypt and met with Pharaoh. He asked that the Israelites be given a short break from their labor to hold a festival to worship God. Pharaoh not only denied the request, but made the Israelites work even more difficult to punish them. But this was just the beginning. To prove that God was on Israel's side, God brought great disasters called plagues on Egypt. God made all the water of Egypt turn into blood, filled the land with frogs and insects, sent diseases to kill the Egyptian animals, gave the people terrible sores, and brought terrible thunderstorms and terrifying darkness. Then God sent one final plague. God protected the Israelites by giving instructions to each family to take a perfect sheep, sacrifice it, and put its blood on the door frames of their houses. The Israelites did what God commanded. At midnight, God moved throughout Egypt, and every firstborn son, including Pharaoh's, 
were killed. But God passed over every house that had blood on its doorframe. Pharaoh was so overwhelmed that he practically begged the Israelites to leave. So in the middle of the night, after living there for 430 years, the Israelites left Egypt. However, Pharaoh once again changed his mind and sent his armies after the Israelites. They chased them for miles until finally they trapped the Israelites at the edge of the Red Sea. But God instructed Moses to strike the water with his walking stick. When he did, a strong wind blew across the sea, creating dry land for the Israelites to walk across. After they reached the other side, God caused the water to crash back down, drowning all of the Egyptians who were following close behind. The Israelites journeyed far away from Egypt. Along the way, God took care of them, giving them quail in the evenings and flaky bread called manna in the mornings. Many times the Israelites complained about their living conditions, but Moses would remind them of God's goodness and continue to lead them toward the land God had promised them. Did you enjoy the story this morning? I want to talk about just one part of it, about, about a baby boy. His name was Moses. During that time when there was a new Pharaoh, there were lots and lots and lots of Jacob's family. And there were so many of them that the new Pharaoh was afraid of them. And so he wouldn't let them keep their baby boys, and he would take them away. So there was one mother, in order to keep her baby boys, she made a little boat out of, out of reeds, and she put her baby in that boat, and she put him in the, the river, in the, in the reeds there, and she had her daughter, who was older, to watch him. The daughter's name was Miriam. And that baby's name was Moses. And the Pharaoh's daughter one day was down by the river and she saw this baby and she took him out of the water. And his name was called Moses because he was drawn out of the water. And the Pharaoh's daughter raised Moses. Now many, many, many years later, it was almost 40 years later, Moses was out watching sheep and he saw the most amazing thing. I want you to imagine. He saw this bush that was burning. But the thing about the bush was even though it was on fire, it wasn't, it wasn't burning up. It was just burning. And God spoke to him from that bush. He said, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to Egypt and I want you to tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. And that's what Moses did. He went and he said, Pharaoh, you need to let God's people go. Well, what do you imagine Pharaoh said? He said, no. Well, God then made many bad things happen to the people in Egypt. Their houses filled up with frogs. They had all kinds of bugs. There were, there were even people died. And finally he said, okay, you take them, you leave. And they left. And so you see, God took care of his people. And you know what else? God takes care of you. Now there's a little song that I thought you might enjoy that goes along with the idea of baby Moses floating in the river. Think about what it would be like if you were in a basket floating in the river and you were kind of sleeping while you were there, and it goes like this. It's little baby Moses, sleep now while you float. 
Rocking in the water in your little basket boat. Can you sing that with me? Little baby Moses, sleep now as you float. Rocking on the water in your little basket boat. And there's a Bible verse we want to remember. And let me read that to you and then we'll learn the, the motions so we can remember this. Don't be afraid. Stand firm. You will see how the Lord will save you today. And that reminds us that God is going to take care of us. So let's do this. Shake our heads. Don't be afraid. Stand firm. Can you do your feet like that? Stand firm. You will see how the Lord, you remember how we did the Lord? Put an L up here on our shoulder and go down to our waist. How the Lord will save you today. And it's in the book of Genesis, chapter 14, verse 13. Let's do it together one time, okay? Don't be afraid. Stand firm. You will see how the Lord will save you today. Genesis 14, 13. I hope you have a great week.